I really want to encourage people. I think purging is one of the best things you can do, even if you don't feel like you have enough, because if you are overwhelmed by what's in your closet, you may never even try to mix and match. And so getting your closet to a place where you are not overwhelmed uh, by what is in there, to me, allows you a lot of freedom that you may not have if you just let it continue to clutter or grow, if you think you're just buying pieces and adding pieces and, and then can never really see the whole thing. Hey there, I'm Amy Connell. Welcome to Graced Health, the podcast for women who want simple and grace-filled ways to take care of themselves and enjoy a little chocolate in the process. I'm a certified personal trainer and nutrition coach who wants you to know your eating, movement, and body don't have to be perfect. You just need to be able to do what you're called to do. Okay, I have a lot of dusty clothes. <laughs> in my closet from basically dormant use over the past year. Now, granted, my job doesn't require me to be in professional attire. But I mean, like I have clothes that are just begging to be taken out to eat and go to a restaurant. We haven't really been doing any of that in the past year. And I know we're not in the clear, but things are looking hopeful. Progress is being made. As people are getting vaccinated and or developing antibodies, you know, things are starting to open back up. People are just more comfortable with getting out. And we're sitting here looking at our closet going, man, it's been a while. <laughs> things are dusty, and I might be out of style. That's why I just wanted to have a little fun today and speak with Mel of Polished Professionals. Mel is a native Houstonian, a wife, a lawyer, a small business entrepreneur, and a woman dedicated some of you are going to love this. She's dedicated to working for pretty shoes. <laughs> we talk about how passable has changed over the last year, the trick to seeing what you like and lack in your closet and the hot colors this season. Now, before we get into Mel, I have a special free program for anyone who wants strong legs, but their knees won't let them do squats and lunges. Grab my new free program, Squat Free Strong Legs, for 12 movements to strengthen seven muscles all in your lower body, a video showing you how to do them, you know, form is really important to me, and then three custom all customizable workouts plus a bonus warm up. You can get all of this over at gracedhealth.com slash strong legs, all one word. Okay, let's bring on Mel. Mel, thank you for joining the podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much. Me too. I am so excited to be here. Okay. So one of the questions that I love to ask people is just like, how's your day been today? And with that, I would love for you to kind of let us know what your days are like, because you wear a lot of different hats. And so kind of tell us yeah. which hat you're wearing today and about some of your other ones. Uh, of course. No, happy to do it. Thank you so much. Um, so today I'll start with that. Um, had some calls this morning. That's kind of what I woke up to um, uh, on Teams. We're not a Zoom company. We're a Teams company. But had a couple calls, went to the doctor to get my contacts, um, and then came back and started a podcast with you. So that's super fun. Um, uh, that's been my day-to-day. -day. But most of my days, I'll just say, you know, they have been um, different than what, what it normally used to look like. You know, we I, I did recently I did a quick little video of a day in the life um, of a lawyer and, you know, kind of a blogger and the things I do um, day in and day out. Um, and it was wake up, coffee, shower, put a little bit of clothes on, you know, that um, are passable <laughs> for everything. <laughs> To do these days and then um you know and then start the day and I go to this little bitty square this background that you see here um that you're looking at um I don't know if your listeners can but it's my little baby corner second bedroom office and that's that has been my life and I kind of shut the door in here and um there's a tv where I take a break and do a workout there's a bathroom and that's my like little 200 square feet of of, uh, of workspace every day that I'm grateful to have and uh, feel so lucky that we've got a space, you know, that my husband and I are both, um, you know, uh, on the computer all the time or on calls all the time. So we separate out just because 
we have to. But other than that, you know, it's been a, it's been a really interesting transition. Uh, but I actually am enjoying working from home. I like it. Oh, you do. Okay. I think there's been yeah. a little bit of different feelings and experiences. So it's good to hear that you're liking it. <laughs> The extrovert part of me is undernourished, I would suggest right now. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, But this kind of thing where I get to talk to you is great. Uh, But the extrovert part where, you know, you get energized by being interact by interacting with people, that part is certainly undernourished, but there's other elements of the freedom of, you know, thinking about just when I can go work out very quickly and come right back to it. I mean, you know, those kind of things that, you know, you can be here when they fix the sink and you don't have to get time off work. And, you know, so there's value proposition there that I, that I still am trying to find the balance for, but it's been, it's been a, um, it's been interesting and I'm, I'm glad I've gotten an opportunity to try it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It's definitely been interesting. I've got kids. Well, everybody's at home at the moment, but in one's, mm-hmm. One's in school, one's at at home. My husband's been at home. I don't know when he's going back in. And so, yeah, it's just I'm I'm really grateful for that time. Uh, but at the same time, it's yeah, it's it's definitely yeah. been an adjustment. Although I guess we've had time to adjust to it by then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this make me less of an extrovert, which is part of my problem. Though, yeah. <laughs> like that's the part that I can't really adjust is like whoever you are is who you are. And so just making that work in the circumstances, then that I think that's been the biggest adjustment for me personally. I totally agree. I don't know. um, I did an interview with Dr. Sandra Dalton Smith, who wrote this book Mm -hmm. called Sacred Rest. And in the Mm -hmm. book, she talked about seven different types of rest. And one of them was social rest. And so when Mm -hmm. I heard that, I thought she was going to say like, get yourself off Facebook, get yourself off Twitter, like get yourself all of the social medias. But what she really meant was finding the people whom you feel the most comfortable and authentic with Mm -hmm. and spending time with them. And I can look back over the basically year that we've had and see how that that has been undernourished, I think, to use your word and mm-hmm. and realize that that's, even though I have like th- my three favorite people in the world here with me in my house, I still have really missed those, um, those intimate and, mm-hmm. and authentic conversations with people face to face. So I, I definitely know I, I would do not consider myself. I don't even know what I think I'm an ambivert. Like I like the people I love uh-huh. these things. And then when I get and then I just need to recharge in person <laughs> or in private. <laughs> but I definitely yeah. know what you mean by that. <laughs> well, yeah. one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on today is this is a little bit outside of the health umbrella, I could probably justify my way into it. But every um I, I just wanted to have a fun conversation because we are at the point where we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And you offer something that I absolutely positively do not have, which is an awareness of fashion and awareness of clothes and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I love looking at your feed and I'm like, oh, that's so cute. And I never would think about putting that together because I just don't think that way. Like I need to, I'm the kind that like needs to see it on a mannequin. (laughs) So I just thought it would be fun to have you on and let's talk about our clothes. And, And I do want to open by saying, you know, I want to also recognize that not everybody listening might be in a point to talk about fashion right now. Like we've had a lot of loss. We've had a lot of job loss. We've had a lot of um, people we love, and this may not be the time to be thinking of that. So I don't, I don't want to not recognize that, but at the same time for, for many of us, you know, we've either had experiences with COVID and people have come out of it, or we've been blessed that we haven't. And so I just kind of wanted to have a little bit of fun and, and talk about, talk about our clothing. So you mentioned something at the beginning, which was what is passable (laughs) to be when you're, (laughs) when you're on your, your team's call or Zoom's call or whatever it is. And it's like figuring out what is passable. So bring me into that because you still are in corporate America and I am not. Tell me what passable uh, means to you right now. I, I will say it has morphed even during COVID, I think. Um, at first, when we thought it was a very short-term uh, endeavor, we were, I think, still uh, dressing closer, to, more akin to the office. Um, 
because we thought we might see you the next month. And so if you really saw the real me, like you might be totally mortified. <laughs> you know, like the one who did just rolled out of bed and, and showed up on a, on a um, call. You know, I think what's happened though, is just uh, the more and more that we've been at home, the less and less, I think we, re- we think that we don't need those handbags. We don't need all those clothes that we had. I mean, it's just, it seems there is folks that really have, are having a very hard time, have been hugely impacted. And so what matters, like putting your head down, doing your work, um, you know, staying safe, those are the things that matter. And it matters much less what shirt you have on. And I think everybody, or at least that's kind of been the realization I've come to, um, you know, and as I've had calls that have morphed from, you know, my boss to my CEO, they're now in, um, you know, by and large, they're in a t-shirt and some of them are in a baseball hat and these are executives in a very big company. And, um, you know, so that's just morphed over time, um, in this nine, nine, 10 month period, I will say, um, you know, at least to give, uh, to get back to your health, um, claims or, or what we talk about here, I do think you feel better when you are confident in the way you look. And that is to me, um, a confidence factor to stay, um, you know, just are one, it's also a body test for me. Like, am I still fitting in? So there's a health element there too, as far as I'm concerned of like wearing actual clothes. <laughs> um, I'm not saying I do it every day, but, but it is, it is one of those things that I just think it helps me get a sense of normalcy that day in the life of structure of kind of wake up, get dressed, go, go to your desk. And at least that part won't be such a huge shift if it, we ever go, whenever we go back to the offices um, and however we go back to the offices. So for passable for me, um, you know, is it the way I like to think about it is um, things that I don't have to send to the dry cleaner, but that don't wrinkle um, that aren't wrinkly and and look weird. um, If I were to be there, they, they look somewhat structured, um, you know, but not, you know, so not like things falling off my shoulders or worn and tattered, that, that, that kind of structure. I, I certainly am wearing much less things with actual buttons in them. There's really, I probably haven't worn a button in almost a year. So let's <laughs> just call that what that is. Um, there's a lot of Spanx in my life, Spanx jeans and things like that. And I think they're fine. <laughs> um, but I do try to, I do try to make sure it looks like I, and, and that's not to say, Pajamas don't count because I think they could if they're nice enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sitting down in front of that, but but I do try to just be passable because um, as a lawyer, I want people to trust me. And part of the way I think you trust me is if I don't look like you know kind of a homeless person um, whenever you're talking to me about whatever your problems are. So right. So uh, to that end, I um, I try to look a little bit put together, but um, certainly not the same routine. I'm curious, do you feel like there has been a little bit of a different standard as a female in an industry rather than a male? Because let's be honest, it takes a while for us to put our makeup on in the hair, you know, in the morning. And if we straight, I mean, we we just do a lot. Our upkeep is a lot more. And then taking it from here to here is still going to look different. So I'm just curious, is is there still a little bit of a different standard or is is it not? I'm, I'm, cur- I'm truly curious. I think there totally is uh, a different standard. And I, I almost think in some ways I do it to myself and I won't speak necessarily for other women more so than others. It's funny. I will show other women, um, you know, when I don't have makeup on and other things like that than I do with men or like in some ways. And I don't know what that is. Um, it, but, but often we do, I've seen people not want to turn on their camera. Let's just say that when they don't feel like they're done up, And I'm just like, okay, at some point we, (laughs) we all have to get past that. Um, because I do miss the interaction of looking at people, um, because you miss so much in a business context, you miss body language, you miss all those things that really matter. But I do think there is somewhat of a double standard. It is funny. I've my boss a couple of times, like when I've actually fixed my hair, he's like, Oh, you know, going out. And I'm like, yeah, the doctor's office or whatever, you know, (laughs) when I've actually done more than just pull it back or Uh something like that. But, um, you know, so I, I, I do try to still put it together, but I do think there is a little bit of a double standard. I don't know if we put it on ourselves or that societal, or maybe that's, you know, so congealed that I can't really tell the difference, um, personally at least. Um, but I do think there's somewhat of a double standard, um, on not double standard that people are holding us to, but one that I feel like I'm at least 
um, presenting to the outside world. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, that that does make sense. I think it'll be interesting to see what tides over. When mm-hmm. we go back, I have a friend who was like, you know, I used to really worry about making sure that my toenails were painted and, and my hair was yeah. fixed. And she said, and now I'm seeing people and seeing other women in particular who have just like, whatever, you're just going to see me how you see me. And what will that look like later when they get back in the office? Because, you know, is there a, a different level of comfort in kind of <laughs> and then in showing the makeup free or maybe, you know, our hair yeah. pulled back or something like that? It'll be interesting yeah. to see what happens with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So as we're sitting here, first of all, I have to tell you, I mean, going back to the clothes, I was like, Ooh, maybe I'll dress up today and wear jeans. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I haven't worn, right. I don't wear jeans very often, but I have clothes. Um, well, so first of all, let me just back up. I know I introduced you a little bit um, at the beginning before we came on, but tell everybody a little bit about your expertise in, we'll just call it the fashion industry. Oh, sure. You know, I, I won't call myself an expert because there are absolutely experts out there, but um, I have uh, been blogging for about almost five years um, now, but I have a blog, I'm a lawyer and I have a blog and none of those things seem like they were supposed to go together. Um, but they, I think they do. Um, my blog is called polished professionals. And I, like I said, I've been doing it for about five years. And, um, for me, it started out of actually doing contracts for bloggers <laughs> and that's it for a company I worked for. And that's how I learned about blogging. Um, I, I worked for a company that sold fashion jewelry. And so we worked with a lot of bloggers and I kind of learned what it was about and understood that I had, um, a um, degree as it related to etiquette consulting um, from an etiquette institute here in the United States. And um, I wanted to put together somehow the soft skills of life that don't get talked about in college. So there's economics 101, there's accounting, there's all these great things that you can learn in college, but there is nothing about networking 101. There is nothing about interviewing 101. There is all these soft skills that are hugely important. And one of them is dress, Mm -hmm. among other things. Um, in the work world. And I saw people make huge mistakes in these things that really impacted their career. And I thought they likely made those mistakes because they didn't know, or because they just were never taught, you know, never taught, never talked about it, never felt like they could go ask somebody about these things. Um, You know, and, and I say it uh, just, you know, there's differences even within the United States. Um, I, I worked for companies in New York. They do things differently than people in Texas, of course. And, you know, so, so there's just all these soft, weird things that are out there in the world that we I wanted a safe space to talk about. Fashion became one of them, not just for the sake of fashion, but really just because I wanted people to feel prepared if they were going for an interview or if they were going to a networking function. I wanted them to feel like they had a place where they could go get a resource and, and know that they could feel confident walking in the door. So that's where it um, grew from and that that has kind of come into you know play now because uh, so much is visual that that blog has kind of grown into um, what it is today. So. Yeah, yeah, and you do a great job. I love your Instagram feed that has a lot of different um, outfits and uh, you know appropriate ways of communicating your style, your tagline. Is, and I'm so sorry, you're gonna have to remind me because it's yeah. like on the tip of my tongue, and I'm forgetting. No, it's, uh, conquer the workaday world with style and poise. Yeah. So we try to, like I said, do, do, do both. And I think people can. Yes, I love that. Okay, so I have clothes. Now, granted, I know my situation is different than yours, right? Like our, um, our jobs are different. Mine require gym clothes (laughs) and yours require buttons. But, but, um, you know, I think still as we're kind of starting to emerge, Mm -hmm. starting to open up that door and like, look and go, can I actually go out to dinner soon? Or can I go meet my friends for happy hour? we have clothes that have been sitting in our closet that we haven't even touched in a year. I mean, like we're going to have to like either get them dry cleaned or wash them or something like that. So let's go to the things that are in our closets. And as you are more familiar with kind of the fashion trends and what's, you know, what is still relevant, what is not, are we even seeing something like that now? Uh, What can we leave? What should we be finding a new home for? What kind of staples do we need? Um, so kind of help us help us navigate this time of, of reemergence into the world. Sure. You know, I, I love, I thought this was a great question uh, because it's really something I've had to even do in my own closet just because, um, you know, what used to matter a year ago 
doesn't matter at all anymore. And there is a whole side of my closet I've hardly touched. And you're right. It is exact. It is getting dust all over it. And I think, will I ever wear those things again? Um, I, I will say to your listeners, my, my style is a classic style. And so I do try to buy pieces that I feel like are versatile and classic and not super, super trendy. That's not my, um, general aesthetic. And so, um, I think you're safer when you buy classics because uh, they do last and they can go season to season and you can layer them and those kind of things. So the the things I have been seeing, um, you know, that has emerged recently is really this idea of of reselling and thrifting out your items that you are not using anymore. There's this adage that says we only use about 10% of our closet and maybe even now it's down to 5% in the current situation where we are living in. So I have been doing a major purge of of so many pieces in my closet Um, for busy women out there that I am not sponsored by them or anything. I use thread up. Um, They are great. They send you a bag or a shipping label. You stick it in a box up to 30 pounds and you mail it to them and they do the rest. So that is my like go-to purging site because it makes it easy. Because to me, part of the problem of purging or cleaning or even thinking about that is that, okay, well, where do I take this? Or how do I try to resell this? And there's like some value, you know, thing that goes through our head of like, you know, what should I do here? And the good part about them is if they don't use it or sell it, then they donate it. So okay. you don't get as high a percentage, you know, from their site because they do most of the work, but for busy women out there that don't want to spend the time, but just want it either, they'd love to be paid for it, or alternatively, they would love it to go to a good place. To me, that is like the easiest thing, stick it in the bag and get rid of it. Um, that doesn't tell you what to put in the bag, which I will get to, but but to me, that, that, just, that one of, of all the sites that are out there to me takes a lot of the guesswork out and allows me to freely purge and feel like I am getting value or giving value, which is, is one response I like to have when I think about that. Um, you know, but, but where fashion I feel like is going, I do think the office look is going to change over time. I think we, that you haven't gone this long for a year in sweatpants and expecting people to go back to full formal business. I just, I don't think that's going to happen. And I'm not, you know, by and large, uh, the workforce has told, you know, their, their companies that we like working from home, at least 54% of the U S you know, really wants to work from home. And, um, 87% said they'd like to work from home a couple of days a week, one to two days a week, or, or have that flexibility. So I say all that to say, I feel like that, shift of working from home, at least some people working from home, those other things, it's going to continue to shift the way that we look and how we work. Um, And so the things I'm trending toward and things that are really, I think, having their heyday right now, certainly are athleisure, but I think a more polished athleisure. I mean, it's certainly not that it ripped and tattered things um, that, you know, I have a lot of old t-shirts that often become my workout wear. Um, but I think this idea of a little bit higher end athleisure, because frankly, I go work out and then I pop on a zoom call, which is the best part of my life, right. you know, um, right now, but, but so, but it can't be that old torn t-shirt. So I think investing in some good athleisure, because I do think it's, it's going to happen. I think that's going to be closer to where, where we're going. This idea of second skin material that's out there. I mean, Kim Kardashian kind of launched her line and those are great underneath staples that you can throw a good, you know, athleisure type jacket under it or things like that. Um, you know, that, that to me is, are the things I'm investing in. Um, still no buttons really though. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do, but I love this idea of these second skin um, things because I think they're so versatile. Mm -hmm. They're like basics, right? And you can really just, if you've got a tank on that's clean lines and and those things, you look polished and put together and you don't have to do a whole lot of work to them. Also, you wash them, right? I don't think, I mean, I'm sorry for the dry cleaners of the world, but I never want to go back to the dry cleaners. So yeah, yeah, I we yeah, have a I, we have a bag of dry cleaning. Like, you know, you take it off and then you stick it in the bag. I don't think we've yeah. gone since March. And in fact, my son was needing something. I was like, it's still in the dry cleaning bag. That's a yeah. reminder to me. Like, I just need to take it and get all of this stuff closed. <laughs> get this yeah. stuff uh, taken like care of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of Athleta. And they have a really great um, mm-hmm. I think they call it City Wear collection or something like that. So it has all of the um you know, the, the, the stretchy and the I, I, a second skin, I actually haven't heard that term before, but a lot of the things that like mm-hmm. you can run and, you know, get your Uber if they yeah. start running off or something like that in them, but they also look nice. So, um, 
yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that kind of stuff. Okay. So if we're sitting and looking at our closet and we're like, okay, I, I don't have to wear buttons anymore. I need, yeah. I need to get some more, you know, I need to get some more clothes. What kind of staples should we be looking for that maybe still have some of that classic com- uh, component that you're talking about, but that will also show that we're kind of still on top of things and we're still somewhat fresh? Yeah, I, you know, the things I am definitely looking for, I think color is one easy way to think about updating a wardrobe that allows it to still be pot- potentially in a classic style, but um, with an updated color. And so, you know, right now it's, it's funny. I mean, I grew up in the eighties and Cindy Lauper was my favorite. And I will just say that these bright Cindy Lauper colors. And I say that with all admiration to Cindy Lauper are back. And um, there's like these bubblegum pinks and these um, tennis ball green and these bright oranges that you're seeing everywhere. That was huge on the runway this year. So to the extent that those kind of pops of color don't scare you, I would suggest that these, some of these things, if you're willing to go with those bright colors, um, I would say that would definitely update your wardrobe in a lot of ways. The other thing that we're kind of seeing um, out there that I think is, is very useful is this idea of a vest, utility vest type look. And you've seen some of those puffer jackets that are out there and some of these cargo type vests. Those are really coming back. And I think those are a neat way. They have some really refined ones. And I think those are a way to wear with like the second skin underneath and put on the cargo jacket. And really you can, you can go from the workout to the zoom call, you know, very, very quickly there. So those are two, the other kind of detail that I've been seeing a lot of, which I think is still a classic detail is lace up. Um, type thing. So even in athletic wear, I've seen the Fenty brand has a lot of lace up and even I've seen it at Lululemon and a few places where lace up details, I'm not a big bow girl. So if the lace up involves a big bow, that's not going to be for me. But if it's somehow just a detail on there, those, those are some modern trends details, but I feel like you can buy them to refresh your wardrobe and still um, make it a useful wardrobe that I think will continue to take you into the rest of 2021 and beyond. Okay, for those of us hand raised who are a little scared of color, <laughs> like the bright mm-hmm. color, yeah. what are some what are some more and this is not the right word to use with reference to this, but muted ways in incorporating that? I'm not ready to go have a bubblegum shirt, but I might yeah. be willing to do something different. <laughs> and I don't know what yeah. that is. <laughs> sure. No. Okay. Well, I, the, I, you know, you always say accessories. And so today, like what does accessories look like? Because I don't know yeah. about you, but I have a whole bunch of purses that have no use to me because I'm not going there. <laughs> so, um, you know, I used to say that my purses and my shoes, I still think I still put on shoes, even though I don't really go anywhere. So even if it's things like your kicks that you're wearing, you know, your tennis shoes, whatever, I think those are a great way to do uh, a pop of color. Um, the, the other thing I think about is scarves that are easy because you will, you know, if you have to run to the store, you can pop something like that on. And then the other thing is, you know, I'm not buying big statement jewelry anymore. I'm certainly not because I'm not even wearing anything because we're sitting in front of a zoom and that would just seem like too much yeah. extra Yeah, trying way too hard to have on big statement earrings or something. But, you know, I would suggest little, you know, things that, that seem zoom appropriate. And I think you can, everybody can scale that, but you know, what does that jewelry look like? I do try to put on, you know, my watch every day, my, you know, something every day that makes it seem like I'm still using some of the things I have out there in the world. Um, all that being said, you know, I, I, I do think there's so much grace if people are not wanting to spend money right now, which I totally, totally get. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways to reuse colors that you, you already have and think about, like I said, layering on, maybe it's just the best and that's the only pop of color that you have. So it, I, I think that there is ways that you can bring it in subtly into, into something. And the, the funny part is just people are straight up Cindy Lauper about this lately it is like mix the orange um scarf with the pink bag and the you know it's just it's been really fun I mean it's great because I love Cindy Lauper and I was all over that when I was a kid so to me it's been a uh, it's been fun so you can't do it wrong and maybe that's part of the um something that people need to hear like you can't do this wrong you can you can look like a rainbow explosion and that is <laughs> fine like that is, it, is, it is fine these days and r- right frankly maybe we need a little joy. I think tie dye was the trend of last year that kind of was like, ah, this is fun. We're in quarantine and I'm going to buy tie dye, you know, and you kind of saw that everywhere. Now I think the way that that's morphed is into these pops of color, which I'm excited about because tie dye, I don't think is something I really can bring back to the office, but these, you know, more bright colors. I feel like if I buy those, well, I can bring that 
forward into the year or longer. Sure. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so let's talk about the athleisure stuff because if someone has decided, okay, I need to look somewhat passable on my Zoom, but I still want to be comfortable, maybe they've invested in that. When is it not appropriate to wear that? Or are there like pieces that you're like, leave those at home? <laughs> Don't wear them and take them into the office <laughs> or, uh, you know, give us a little bit of guidance with that. I, I would say this much, you know, zoom is mostly from the waist up. So yeah. that is what, you know, that is real. I do think, um, you want to feel like you're at least put together. So to w- whatever helps you get there, I think that is important to consider. Um, you know, if you're giving a big presentation, even if, even if it's only from the waist up, what does that feel like or look like to you? Um, how do you feel you're most confident? And so that is one thing I always want to think about. Uh, you know, as a lawyer, sometimes I'll be in front of a judge. Um, I'm probably going to dress up no matter what, because if I um, somehow my ring light falls down, I have to stand up and get it up and whatever, you know, you just want to feel like no matter what happens, if I have to get up or stand up or do anything, I look right. And so um, I I do think there's those times, I think they're fewer and far between than they used to be though. And so um, to me, it's, it's partly how you feel about it, but you know, this is a rule of thumb for me in general um, because you just always want to look like you are put together if you are in the workplace. And so it's just no torn or tattered or terribly wrinkled things. Those are kind of my staples and rules of thumb. Um, Certainly nothing like, inappropriate as far as, you know, if you would wear it to the club and you may wear it at home because it's like a bralette or something like that, that's not appropriate at the office. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it just, it, that, that's just never appropriate at the office. And so, um, you know, th- th- those kind of things I would say, keep the, the, those are true always, um, for me, whether it's, whether I'm on zoom or, or otherwise, but the torn tattered, you know, kind of wrinkled ripped or, club wear. None of those are good at the office still today or ever. So those are the things I tell people, but, but even, you know, like, but me, I'll, I'll go work out in a sports bar on my house, but I need to put on something else. Like if I, yeah, you know, I, yeah. even though that's not where I need to go put on something else for my boss. Well, and I'm CEO. laughing at your com- Yeah. I'm laughing at the comment of the club wear. Cause I'm like, huh, yeah. when was the last time I even went to a club? Oh. I mean, like <laughs> a decade ago. <laughs> Right. <laughs> At least right. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's been yeah. a while. It's been a while. Oh, oh, that's awesome. Okay. So what advice, um, do you have any parting thoughts for people mm-hmm. who are just thinking, I gotta, I gotta do something or, uh, I'm looking at my off my closet and, and I feel like what I have is not the right thing. I mean, mm-hmm. any final words of guidance for that from a fashion and workplace related perspective? Sure. I'm- I mean, I I really want to encourage people. I think purging is one of the best things you can do, even if you don't feel like you have enough, because if you are overwhelmed by what's in your closet, you may never even try to mix and match. And so getting your closet to a place where you are not overwhelmed uh, by what is in there, to me, allows you a lot of freedom that you may not have if you just let it continue to clutter or grow. If you think you're just buying pieces and adding pieces and and then can never really see the whole thing. Um, I think that's, that's really cruel to yourself um, uh, to to say, I'm going to change this or think about it. So I think purging is really a great tool. The the other thing I like to encourage people to do is, um, and for me, I do this, I color coordinate my closet. Now, now when I say that, don't think it is like one inch apart and beautifully done, but I do kind of lights in one area. The way my closet is separated is by kind of workwear, which is pretty much gone untouched by and large, by color, generally lighter to darkest. And then by things that I typically are either underneath pieces or other things like that, that are, are also by color. The colors help me figure out what is my general palette. Because when you see it, when you do it, you understand what your palette is, what you like or what you lack, frankly, because if it's all mixed up, you know, you, you can't really see that. So to me, those are those are two of the things purging and kind of organizing your closet to me will help you know what you have, what your color palette is, what you like and what you lack. Um, and so if you're not doing those things, I feel like it is an overwhelming task by and large. And so um, give yourself a chance. Yeah, that's really good to know. I know I get emotionally attached to some of my clothes as well. And I'm like, Oh, this friend gave this to me. And I really am not quite ready to get rid of that. But I, I don't ever wear it or uh, we'll just say the washer shrunk it or (laughs) for whatever reason. Uh, So that is that's freeing to me. I know, you know, and, and the thread up is good as well. Because I know a lot of the places that I have historically 
you know, tried to rehome my clothes to in the past have pivoted their serving efforts. So they're not necessarily, um, like there's a, a local mission center here that I really love to, to contribute to. And their whole thing is like, it's a hand up, not a handout. And they, they just have a really great mission. Well, when COVID hit, they're like, we're not taking any donations. We're just helping people yeah. like get their food yeah. and get like the, the necessities. So I can't go, I can't go donate to them. Um, thread up is, is really good. I'll have to consider that. And it's nice to know that I'm sure they have partners and I'm sure they have places that even if they don't sell it, it and I like, to me, honestly, I'm like, just take it. <laughs> if anything, right. I thought would be a bonus. Well, like, especially if you want to try to get value for it, I understand that. To me, like I said, you don't get, you, it doesn't take the time. You don't get quite the value you would if you listed everything you owned. On, but that is daunting to me to say, I'm going to go on Poshmark or yeah. eBay and list all these things and spend that time and take those pictures. I don't want to do any of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I want it to be an easy thing. And they do, you know, they are incentivized to try to sell it if they can, because they get a portion of it, but they do have partners that they will, they will donate or either return to you, whatever you choose. Um, And to me, that is just a really great, um, option. You can see their charitable partners and, and check that out. Um, and like I said, I'm not paid by them. I don't do anything with them. I just, I, I have sold a lot with them because it's so convenient for me. <laughs> like it. That's, so, good, yeah. to know. That's yeah. good to know. Okay. Two more questions. One is something I've been asking my guests and that is, um, I am fascinated by tattoos. I have mm. had some really interesting conversations with people when I asked them about the meaning behind it. So I was wondering if you had any, if you would like to share us what, what it is and, um, if there's a story behind it. And if you don't, if you had to get one, had to get one. Okay. What would it be and where would it go? Okay. Well, I can stop you right now because I have several. <laughs> um, and so, um, so I don't even have to guess. I would, I'll say this much though. I would have more, um, but for my husband doesn't really love them, but I absolutely love them. I would cover my whole body in them. Um, except for the things that I have to show to a judge. So if I could, so that's my story on tattoos. I love them. Um, I, uh, my first tattoo I got, um, and I'll give you a couple of them. Uh, my first tattoo I got was with some folks on my volleyball team, uh, in college and, um, kind of went with my nickname that they had for me in college. And so it's a volleyball. It meant a lot to me, um, with, with some sunflowers around it and, um, did it with my girls. And that was a great time in my life. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, I can't remember the order I got them, but the second one I'll tell you, um, is actually from a Bible. It's from my grandfather's Bible. And he, um, was hands down my favorite person. He was pastor. And, um, it happened to be the sign of the Trinity that was in the front of a Bible of his that he gave to me, um, that he used to use to preach. And so I copied that sign of the Celtic sign of the Trinity out of that. And, um, and gave myself that tattoo, which was, is beautiful. And I still love it very much. Um, and then the other, I, I, you know, that I'll just tell you about, cause I, I love America. Like I had my, my dad painted a waving American flag around three walls of my bedroom growing up. I mean, huge. Um, I always loved watching presidential speeches, like as a kid. And my parents thought that was very weird. Like that I would get to walk over to the union address. And I thought that was great. And it didn't matter the party. It was just like, yes, this is America. This is great. And so I love America. So I have a um, big, big tattoo um, down one side that is a Statue of Liberty uh, flame coming up out of the top. And I actually got that done um, during one of my girlfriend's um, bachelorette parties because they just wanted to go shopping and like the gap. And I just always thought that was weird, like to go shopping. And so I was like, mm, I'm going to go to get a tattoo, like, because I can go to the gap where where I, we were on, we were somewhere. And anyway, but <laughs> they were just like shopping in the mall. And I was like, mm, that's, I can do that in Houston. I'm going to go get a tattoo. <laughs> So there, there's a story of all of them, um, but they, they definitely represent me. I mean, things that I care about and things that I like, and um, I would probably get a million more, but I mean, but yeah. I'm probably not for my husband's sake at this point. <laughs> <laughs> he, me, but he didn't love them. Let's just say that. Yeah. Well, I, I don't have any, but I'm, yeah. I'm just fascinated by them. Like I've, there's never been anything that I really want, but I, I really have found that people kind of, most of the time, they really give it a lot of thought. And I think it yeah. just helps at least I feel like it helps connect me to whomever is sharing their story because it's always, like I said, it's, I mean, most of the, most of the time we give a lot of thought to what we're going to put on our body for, you know, to have for the rest of our lives. So thanks for sharing that. I love that. I feel like, I feel like you, you've got the whole gamut of, (laughs) 
<laughs> Very random. They don't go together. The tattoos don't go together, but they all mean something to me. Yeah. How about that? Oh, I love yeah. that. No, I think that's yeah. great. And it also shares, um, yeah, the the importance of the people in your life too. I love that one yeah. about, about your grandfather. Oh man, he would probably be mortified, but... <laughs> That's okay. I mean, he knows it's because I love him. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And then finally, is there a meaningful scripture that you would like to share with us today of just something that's impacting you yeah. either now or has in the past? Well, I, I love this. Thank you for that question. Um, I'll read to you. I feel like this is a great scripture for COVID times. Um, and so it's been something that has been a life first for me. And um my, if you read Psalm, it's in Psalm and it's Psalm chapter 27. And, um, my parents divorced when I was very young and it does talk about your mother and father and your relationship to them. And so Psalm 27 has meant a lot to me, but the way it ends, um, has just been my life verses. And I feel like just are super pertinent in this time of COVID. Um, but it's Psalm 27 verses 13 and 14. And it says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And, um, you know, just as we are all impatient in this time, um, and of course, always, I don't know about the rest of the world, but I never think God moves fast enough. I know his timing is perfect, but I always wish he moves at my timing, which is surely imperfect. You are not alone in your thinking of that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Surely imperfect. But um, anyway, I say that this verse just reminds me, one, um, that that God that God is good and there is goodness uh, from the Lord out there, no matter what is happening in the world around us. Um, and, and this just encourages us to take heart, be, be courageous, be strong and waiting for him in his timing. And um, sometimes that is a word I need to hear way more often than I like to admit, but um, I need to hear that word all the time. And especially during COVID, it's meant a lot to just, um, to just wait, uh, wait for the Lord's timing. Amen. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. And it really has. I mean, I remember, I remember doing an interview at the end of March of 2020. And in it, I said, it's just unfathomable to think that this may be, you know, it, we may still be in this in, in May, because it was a mental health focused one. And I was going to be hearing it in May, which is mental health awareness month. And I'm like, May was a really long time ago. <laughs> It was a really what? long time. <laughs> so, you know, come on, God. Like, you know, aren't we on? <laughs> you had enough. You had enough? Like, <laughs> it's so yeah. true. Oh, gosh. Okay, Mel, this was this was great. Thank you so much for your information. If people want to get a hold of you or in touch with you, where can they find you? I think the best place to head is polish-professionals.com. It has all my social channels um, and all the all the blog information and my email information there. Awesome. Yes. And I highly recommend uh, listeners go follow Mel on, um, on Instagram. There's a lot of great stuff. And if you're on TikTok... I, you, this is something we didn't even talk about, but with your dance background, because I know you've got a dance background, you do a lot of things that I am not courageous enough to do. And so I just look at you and I grin and I'm like, dang, she's great. <laughs> I am too old to do most of it. But here's the thing for me, it's like my 10 minute breaks that I'll take after I've been sitting here in this little, you, you know, this little baby office that is in the corner of my second bedroom in my house and I need to dance sometimes. And, uh, uh, sometimes it's fun, but who knew I I'm having a good time. And the fact that people follow me on that is just shocking. Cause I'm just like the old lady at the club doing my dances all the time. <laughs> it's great. It's I don't care. Yeah. Oh, you're great at it. You're great. It brings a smile to my foot face and so good. I think you're fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's great to be here. There you have it. Purge, color coordinate your closet, and embrace those Cindy Lopper colors. <laughs> Mel really does have some fantastic styles on her socials. We are connected on Instagram, and I love her feed. Remember, you can find her on polished-professionals.com, and I'll have all the social links in the show notes. Don't forget to get your squat free strong legs program at gracedhealth.com slash strong legs. Yes, this is in the show notes as well. And this is always a little awkward to ask, but if you find value in the show, would you bless me with a $5 virtual cup of coffee? 
There's a lot of back end costs associated with producing this podcast and the content on my website and socials. It's all free to you. And I'm super glad for that. But it's not to me. Any one time or monthly support you can offer is greatly appreciated. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash Amy Connell. That's in the show notes as well. And if that's not in your budget or not something that you feel led to do right now, totally get it. Simply sharing any episode to one friend friend to your Facebook friends helps and then rating and review helps so much as well. What's the one simple thing I want you to remember, which is what I like to do at the end of every episode. As we emerge from quarantine, we may not need a whole wardrobe refresh. Simplify what you have through cleaning out what you don't use, and then add in a few colorful accessories if you want. And what I would love to do is to see your Cindy Lauper colors out there. If you take a picture with something bright or colorful, put it out there on the socials, tag me, I want to see it. And I'm sure Mel would love to see it as well. Okay, that is all for today. Go out there and have a great day. 